if you practice this, you will improve a lot in your consistency when you're under pressure. Today we're continuing with uh, Noah's uh, progress. The volleys to get it more from high to low with more slice. And then after we do some bandejas as well and some key tips on how you can improve very, very fast. Vamos. The ball's coming and it's you wait until the ball is low and then you try to hit it. Yeah. Would be better to step in and hit higher so you can bring it more down with more slice. So try to be a little bit more active with the footwork and step in more. Yeah. yeah? coming and you you hit it like this and then it's a lot of arm and if the ball is slow it's perfect but if the ball is fast you have a problem yeah so let's pick up the balls we do a nice drill that's going to kill your legs leg day today what will be better if you step and hit at the same time with the footwork this is going to improve all of your volleys amazingly fast um, because if you step and hit at the same time you don't have to use that much of arm and that will help you to have way more control because if the ball is fast you can hold, you don't have to step. And if the ball is slow, you can step in a little bit more. Um, but if you're passive with the feet and then you make a very big swing with your arm, if the ball is fast, you don't have any time to get a good shot. If the ball is slow, you have time, but would be even better also to have more precision to turn your body and step and hit at the same time. So that's what we're going to practice today. So Noah's going to sit on the chair because you sit at the net, you don't stand at the net. So he's going to sit and from there, is it relaxing? You want to drink, Noah? Yeah, yeah okay. We're training! <laughs> so, and then step and hit at the same time. So the moment you touch the ball, it's also the moment when you come on the ground. Yes! So when you're hitting the ball now, Noah, it's sometimes you hit it like here, mm -hmm. the folly. I think it would be better to hit it a little bit at uh, the back of his head. So if I'm a ball, <laughs> then hit here. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you're hitting like here underneath my, my neck. And then sometimes the ball will go up a lot. Uh, but it would be better that you touch or you shave the back of my head here. So we'd be like more of a cutting, yeah? Yeah, and if the ball is lower, you can still cut the ball. So then you play like this. See my, 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 my termination? If you go like that, the ball will go up and you will lose the net position and the match. Yes. Yep. If the ball is lower than the net, you cannot accelerate. Then you have to play slower. Because now the ball is not coming off the wall that much. Look, nobody can... It's not easy to play me a lot. Because you cannot get underneath the ball. So most likely they play low to me and I still have the net. So sometimes you don't, have an, don't even have to use the wall or let people use the wall. Because if you want to play this ball deep, you have to lift it up. And if it touches the glass, it's easy to lock. So if the ball is low, play slow and short. Or to the fence. Yes. Yes. Yes, like this. Yes. Yes. Much better. And the ball is still going. Yeah. 
For the volley, it's important to go from high to low because then you have like slice and the ball doesn't come up. So high to low volley, I'm gonna play there, high to low. Now the ball remains low. If I play a little bit upwards, the ball will come up against the wall. So that's the very big difference between playing high to low and high low high volley. And a lot of players have those high low high volley. And if you do that, you're, you're gonna lose. step so sometimes you step very very large and then the swing will be large uh -huh. so i think it would be better to have it closer to you know and then from there more slice closer step. yeah so if you if you do a big step you will probably have a big swing so if you do a small step you probably have a small swing okay. do some bandejas as well and some key tips on how you can improve very very fast so the goal of the bandeja is that you play it slightly deeper and a little bit more consistent so to improve your bandeja for you at home as well it's good to do those things. So you do 10 shots and you try to get seven out of 10 inside the box. What do you think, what is your, uh, what would be your goal? Two out of three. Oh, two out of four. Three out of five. Nice, four out of six. Four out of nine. Four out of 10. What was the difference? Pressure. Pressure, yeah, because the moment you had to put the ball in, you were moving less. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you should move, we do it again, and you move extra. Okay. So when you feel pressure, it's better to move extra, so you know you're gonna be good for the ball. Okay. Yeah? It's about the small steps. Try to turn a little bit more. So try now to get your body positioned more towards the corner. So instead of being here, try to be here. Okay. And you don't have to destroy the ball. It's about consistency. So a little bit less speed, because now I play a deep bandeja and it's not fast. Mm -hmm. So it's about playing a, a medium speed ball that is deep. Yeah? Okay. So this is one of the most important things to train consistency. So when you are training, don't do drills where there is no target. Make a target and do the one out of 10 game. So how many out of 10 you can get inside the box. Make it as small, as big as you want. Okay. Vamos. Yes. One out of two. Turn your body. Yes. Try to hold it less tight. Less tight. Yeah, because if you hold it less tight, you have more control. Okay. Yeah? So now it was a little bit that you hit the bandeja and you stop here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you need to be going over there in order to get the ball deep. Okay. Yeah? So try to have it here 
and followed through longer and relaxed so you can play the ball deep. Yeah? So this is the way to improve yourself on the pressure because you need some extra pressure. You need to, to try to have that match pressure in the game because a lot of players, when there is pressure, they're going to play slower or different or uh, not their best shot. And if you practice this, you will improve a lot in your consistency when you're under pressure. Okay, no, now do, we do it slightly different. Now you're going, we're doing the in a row challenge. So you're going to try to get as much balls in the box as possible in a row. Oh. So if you play two in a row and you miss the third one, or the third one is just outside the box, you count again. And now you get your highest score. Yeah. So this is also about consistency. Oh. What will be your target? I'll be a bit more realistic, I think. Yeah. So uh, let's do a three. Three in a row? Three. Three in a row starts to flow. That's what Shall be doable, I think. Yeah. <laughs> So no, and now we're going to do this in a rally. So you're going to try to play everything in the box over there. So if you're under pressure in the rally, then if you're watching this at home, this is a very good place to play because it's the deepest angle. So if you're making a lot of mistakes, try to play deep cross so you make less mistakes. So now Noah, you try to play everything deep. You don't have to play fast, but try to play deep. Yeah. yeah? So this is one of the tactics you can use is to just put pressure in the corner, in the corner, in the corner, in the corner to make your opponent crazy. Um, and if you're not playing so well, deep corners are deep place to play when you're under pressure. So Noah, well done today and uh, good luck in your tournaments. Thank you. Hasta luego. Ciao. Adios.